And when you're brand new, you need help more than anyone else. Okay, if you think about it, 92, most people don't know this, 92% of new insurance agents fail within the first three years. I'm gonna give you the specifics of what I believe and what I know and what you need to know so that you can instantly make sure that you are not another statistic. Okay, so stay with me. Also, I'm gonna offer a special bonus at the end. When you stay with me for the whole video, I'm gonna reward you later, okay? The first one, the first tip, as I go over five tips for new insurance agents. The first one is most insurance agents don't realize that you need to always be learning. And when I say learn, most people, most people think, okay, I can, go, I can go learn, I can go study, I can go read a book. Oh, and then, okay, now I can just move on, right? When, when, when we put out content, like our new CA sales system, it's got well over 250 videos in that thing. And when, when, when an agent plugs in, right? They need to watch about 12 minutes per day, twice a day. Okay. So I recommend 24 minutes per day of learning. Okay. 12 minutes at the beginning of the day and either 12 minutes at lunch or at the end of the day. Okay. So that's how you break it up. Cause you think about that for a second. If you do the math and you think about that, that is, that is about, that is uh, at, 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 at five days, that's about 120 minutes per week, okay? Which ends up being right at two hours per week. You need to always be learning. Well, most people, you're either moving forward or moving backwards. You never stay in the same place. You, when you think, oh, I'm gonna watch these 32 videos, I'm gonna know everything, I don't need to rewatch them, you're wrong. You need to watch the content, you need to rewatch the content, you need to rewatch the content, you need to rewatch the content until it becomes part of you. You need to continually rewatch it, you need to role play, you need to reenact it, you need to have quizzes and workbooks like we do with our CA cell system. Everything you need to know, it needs to become part of you so that you're not just simply learning and then forgetting it later, you're continually always learning. The most successful people in the world, are always learning every single day. They do not go backwards. They realize that they're coachable and they realize they need to learn constantly. So the first tip is you need to always be learning. You're not moving forward, you're going backwards. And that's what I recommend every single day, right? Plug it in daily, daily, daily. That's consistency, okay? The next piece is you need to get frequent. And if you think about that, you could say, well, you need to get active, right? Most insurance agents, Think, well, I need, I, I need to know everything before I do anything. That is incorrect. That is not correct, okay? Yes, you want to know a lot, but you can do stuff along the way while you're learning. The best way to learn is on the fly. And you got to think about this. You got to get frequent before you can ever get great, right? Everyone wants to be great, but you can't be great if you're not frequent. If you're not put in the work every single day, you're never going to get great, right? How could you? Most people think I'm gonna walk in, I'm gonna sell this person on my first appointment ever and I'm gonna be amazing. And it's gonna be an easy career and I'm gonna you know, high five each other in line at the bank and I'm gonna make a million bucks and all, all of a sudden this is gonna be the easiest career in the world. No, it's very difficult. Now, can you succeed? Absolutely, do I want you to succeed? Absolutely. But you cannot get great until you get frequent. Okay, you need to be active constantly, every day. You need to be putting up numbers. You need to be, if, if, you, if you gotta make 100 calls a day, make the 100 calls. You're never gonna be great on the phone until you pick up the phone time and time again. Pick it up, okay? The third tip is you need to do the math. What does that mean? Well, first you need to have a goal, right? What does that look like for you? What is the goal? And then you need to break down the numbers, okay? I'm a big believer in goals. When I was a brand new agent, I set a goal. I wanna make 100 grand, right? Because when I, I walked into my first recruiting meeting ever, quick story. Okay. I walked into my first recruiting meeting ever as a brand new agent. I was an intern calling out of a phone book for a veteran agent. Then I decided I want to become a full-time agent. Okay. I was 20 years old. I was in college taking 21 credit hours a semester, playing basketball, games, tournaments, weekends, all that, right? Most people would have made excuses. Would you make excuses? Well, hope not because I did not. But what I did is I showed up to a recruiting meeting and the manager, there was 10 of us in a room and the manager said, okay, all 10 of you stand up. All right. And I'm like, well, I'll be standing up. You know, I start looking around, start sizing people up, okay? And then he says, okay, nine of you sit down. So nine of us sit down. He says, maybe one of you will make it. I'm like, dang, dude, that's a, that's a real positive way to start this whole deal, okay? But I also thought, 
if there's going to be a one, I'm going to be the one. If there's going to be a one, I want you to be a one. Okay. I want you to be a one. I don't want you to be a statistic. I want you to succeed, which is why I'm going over these specific tips. In that moment, I set a goal. I did the math and I said, I will earn. I wrote it down and I want you to do this right now. I will earn $100,000 my first year. I dated it. I signed it and I put up in the wall of my cubicle. And every day I went out to make that a reality every single day. And not only what I did was I wrote it down because you need to you need to write it down. You need to let everyone know that that is your goal. And then you need to keep writing it down daily so that your mind is always on that goal. I'm, the best way to achieve a goal is to set it big target, right? and then repeat it, and then consistently remind yourself that that is the target. Okay, so that's tip number three. Do the math. In your case, what is the math? Well, maybe it's like everybody else. Maybe it's 100 grand. Okay, well, $100,000 is $2,000 a week. Okay, $2,000 a week is $400 per business day. Okay, so how do you make 400 bucks? Maybe it's one sale. Maybe you only need five sales per week to actually end up hitting the 100K later on, right? It's that weekly consistency that actually makes up all of those results where you end up really happy at the end of the year. Oh my gosh, I can't believe I achieved this. But it, it, a big goals can scare people. Chop away, right? Chop some wood on a little goal every week. If you hit one goal this week, you can hit one goal next week. If you hit next week, you get the following week. Okay, so do the math, all right? Fourth tip. Fourth tip is you need to see the people. See the people. I, I teach this this, uh, this this weekly system called Triple S, right? It's set, sit, and sell. For me, I always wanted to set 15 appointments, sit with 10 to sell five. What does that look like for you? Most people fail because they don't set enough appointments. They don't set up appointments because they don't make enough calls, right? They don't make enough calls because they don't have enough stuff to call. And when they do, don't, they, and, then, and then later when they don't set up appointments, they either blame their skill, they blame the leads, or maybe because they don't have enough appointments, they don't sit with enough people. We don't sit with enough people, we don't make enough sales, we don't make enough sales, we don't make enough money, we don't make enough money, you quit, right? We did a virtual conference recently on the topic, if you don't quit, you can't fail. Most of you quit way too soon. So my challenge to you is do not quit. Take this thing seriously. I believe in you. You were meant to do something big and see the people. How do we see the people, right? Set, sit, sell. Every single week. I don't know what that saying is, right? Chop wood and carry water, right? Every week, what do you need to do? What does that math break down to? And what can you do on a weekly basis every single week so that you end up seeing enough people to succeed? I promise you, if you ask me, Cody, would you rather the worst salesperson in the world that, saw, that, saw, that sat with 10 every week or the best salesman in the world that sat with two, I'll take the worst every day of the week. You don't want to be the worst, but I would take the worst because of the frequency, right? You get the concept, you get the idea. Fifth tip, fifth tip is to rinse and repeat, right? Always be learning. This isn't a, this isn't a sometimes thing. Get frequent. You got to be frequent to get great, right? That creates consistency. This is one of the biggest things that, that agents in our industry don't realize is that this is the most important piece to you succeeding as a new insurance agent. Okay. You can't get great until you get frequent. I want you to be frequent, right? I don't want you, I don't want you, I don't want you to be lazy. I want you to put in the work, put in the time and show up and do it. Do the math. What's it look like for you? What's your goal? And then write it down every single day. Write your goals. I, I, I write my goals every single day. I do five things every single day. Right? I wake up about 5.45 to 6 o'clock. I write down my goals. I work out. Okay, got to get my energy up. Energy is everything. Enthusiasm is everything. Energy is everything. I learn video, book, audio book, and then I finish with a cold shower. That's my routine. You got to have a routine. Right? You want to create, you want to be consistent. You want to be frequent. Right? You want to hit your goals. You got to create those success habits. And those come from having a daily routine. Now, I'll do that on, that's for another video. Okay? So do the math. Are you, have you done the math yet? If you haven't, my challenge to you right now is as soon as this is over, sit down by yourself before you keep watching videos and do the math. I challenge you to sit and do the math. 
Okay, I really do. Take a couple minutes. I promise you'd be worth it. If you make a hundred grand in, in, in 12 months or you made a million bucks in 10 years, all because you took 60 seconds to actually sit down and do the math, would it be worth it? Yes, it would. Okay, then you gotta see the people every day, right? And then rinse and repeat. I'm telling you, these are the five tips for new insurance agents. You can succeed, you can make the kind of money you want, and you don't wanna be a statistic like everyone else. Okay, and I promise you a special bonus. The special bonus is if you want me to train you or your team to help you be better, or even if you want a free strategy call, email me, Cody at CodyAskins.com, and I'll do my best to hear you out and help you succeed. Hey, there's one thing a new insurance agent just like you should do right now. And I'm not saying later. I'm not saying tomorrow. I'm not saying next week. Because when you procrastinate, you don't do stuff. I'm talking about stop right now. As soon as this video is over, you do it with me. And I'm going to show you how. Okay. So the first thing every new insurance agent should do, because I did it, you should do it. And there's a book called Prospecting Made Easy that says if you can't write down 500 people that you know, then you aren't serious about prospecting. The best way, and everybody says it, and you're going to shy away from it because I'm going to talk about your warm market for a second. And I see you rolling your eyes. Stay with me because it'll make you six figures the next couple of years. I guarantee it. Okay. If you do it effectively, what you should do is you should say, okay, here is my top 200. And I'm not saying go back and, and think about numbers and emails and all that right now because it'll bog you down, it'll be too much information, it'll overload you and you won't do anything. Okay, so right now, I want you to look at your phone. I want you to look at your Facebook account. I want you to ask family. I want you to think about friends. And I want you to think about 200 names. And I want you to, just for right now, Right, you can figure out how to get in touch with them later. Write down 200 names of people that you know or that know you that you could eventually talk to. Because what I'm sold on is when I made $117,361.13 my first eight months, a good portion of it, at least a third, was my warm market. Start thinking about how important this is. Start realizing that you need to do it. I don't care if you're scared, right? My sales manager, I'm a brand new agent. Two things happened that I think helped me succeed. So pay attention. Two things real quick. The first thing was I was sitting with four new agents and the manager looked across the table and said, all right, there's a good chance that at least three of you won't make it. I like to be challenged. I'm going to make it, right? So that motivated me. Most people like that would depress them. That motivated me, okay? That was the first thing. The second thing was when I said... I'm scared of picking up the phone to call my warm market. And I'm, a, I'm ashamed to say those words came out of my mouth. I know you would think Cody Askins would never say that. That's a chump move, but I did it. And I know you're thinking it right now. Other thing is, my manager said, out of your top 200, who's one person that you do not want to talk to? If we could take somebody off the list from you, who would it be? And I said, that lady right there. And he said, perfect. He dialed the phone number and handed me the phone. Ring, ring, ring. It's calling her. And I'm like, dude, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to do. He's like, just be yourself. Surprisingly, she was receptive. The call went really well. I set an appointment. It was one of my first sales ever. Because a coach, a mentor, a manager made me do something that I did not want to do. The same can be applied to you. Focus on, that's the number one thing an insurance agent should do. Write down 200 names right now and do it today. And I promise you, you'll make 30, 50, 40, 50K over the next year and 180, 100K over the next two years just from doing this. All right, hey, every now and then we choose a popular question and we do a video on it. One of the most popular things that we get asked is which insurance license should I get to start my insurance career? All right, so you're wanting to have a career in the insurance business where you are making some money, all right? I want to, I want to, I want to throw a few stats at you. Number one, 92% of insurance agents fell in the first three years. There are more millionaires than any other, than this industry, in their industry in the world. It's also can be extremely lucrative financially. So what are some of the benefits, before I tell you which license to get, what are some of the benefits of actually joining the insurance business? Okay, I would say um, the most common answer would be flexibility, you know? 
I think that's good, right? Even though mo the successful insurance agents actually work more than the 92% that fail, okay? So it's a benefit, but, it, but is it really true, right? You can be your own boss. I think that's great, right? I, don't, I personally don't wanna work for corporate America. I don't know if you do or not, but I personally don't want to. Okay, so flexibility, be your own boss. Um, I would say that there's an unlimited income potential, right? Most people don't know that I made $117,361.13. Don't forget about the pennies. In my first eight months as a brand new insurance agent at 20 years old in college playing basketball. Okay, so I understood all this. Also, you can create a residual renewal income stream that can stay with you for long times to come forever right and I, I know i know a lot of agents that are making 10 grand a month 50 grand a month i know insurance agents making 100 grand a month right it's possible in this career so which insurance license because you could say well i want to go the you could say i want to go the life insurance route or I want to go the health insurance route, or I want to go the P and C insurance route, property and casualty, selling home and auto, selling commercial. I think it really varies by the individual. Personally, I got started out selling life insurance as a 20 year old agent, and I didn't try to sell anything else. And when I did that, I forced myself because I do believe that life insurance is the toughest, even though I prefer it, it's the toughest way to succeed in the insurance business. It's not easy. It is the toughest way to succeed. It's the, it's the toughest product to sell. Think about life insurance. Life insurance is the only product in the world that you can, that a prospect can own, but never actually use. Think about that for a second. I don't know of another product in the world where some the, the owner owns it, but they never actually get a chance to use it. Their family gets a chance to reap the rewards and use it. But you're selling something that they're never gonna get a chance to use, right? I understand you can add living benefits and all that, I get it. But however, the essence of life insurance, the death benefit, they don't get to use it, okay? So that's life insurance. Life insurance is, it's difficult. Um, it's tough to get in front of people. And when you're trying to establish yourself as an insurance, an insurance career, getting in front of people week after week after week, whether it's face to face or over the phone, is extremely important and valuable because activity is what holds most insurance agents back from being successful. So let's talk health insurance for a second, right? You could say, well, I wanna do regular health or I wanna do Medicare, right? So I'm building a residual income business. So life insurance, you can make money fast, okay? You can get, uh, like I made 100 grand, at 20 years old in eight months, you can too. Medicare, can you make 100 grand in your first eight months ever? I'm not saying you can't, but it's much harder, right? Because you get paid a lower amount of money, but you get paid that over the course of several years and sometimes for as long as the client will stay with you, okay? So there's some if you if you have if you're like a dude, I, I I'm leaving my I'm leaving my corporate job, and I have to make $180,000 this year. Well, you're gonna need to you're gonna need to sell life insurance, right? But if you're like, well, I have three years to get to a six-figure renewal income, then maybe a combination of life and Medicare makes sense, right? I know a ton of individuals that have built six-figure renewal incomes by selling Medicare. You know, I'm personally always been a life guy. I just I like you know, I like life and and, and living and. So maybe some people prefer Medicare, okay? So PNC, property and casualty, that's where you're selling home, auto, commercial, and all the other stuff that comes with all these things, okay? Now, is this the easiest thing to sell? Yes. Is there, is it a slower road in that you can make a ton of money years from now. Yes, do you normally have to start off in an office where you're actually working for the man or the woman and you gotta prove yourself before you can have your own branch or your own office or whatever? Typically, yes, okay? Now, can you make a lot of money long-term? Yes. Personally, right, I know a lot of really successful people in this space, 
I'm buddies with some successful people in this space. I'm buddies with the biggest influencers in the PNC space, right? My soup guys. However, it's personally not my cup of tea. So if you were to ask me, okay, Cody, which insurance license should I get to start my insurance career? That's a that's the title of the video. That's why I clicked on the video. Give me an give me a direct answer. Well, I would say you need to start with your life and health license, and you I would get both at the exact same time. I got mine both at the exact same time, even though I didn't sell a health insurance product for, for, or a Medicare product for about a year when I got my license. Like it wasn't, I wasn't intending on selling Medicare at all. But if you're like, hey, I realize I want to get into the business and have a career and make some money, then I would start out with life and health license because you can make, you can have tons of flexibility. You can be your own boss and, and, and incredible income potential. Truly, truly unlimited, right? You can create a re residual income stream. And if you're ever looking for like companies for me to like point you to, I'm, hey, I'm getting my license. I want to, I want help. Dude, free, feel, feel free to uh, email me. You know, I, I've, I have uh, relationships with a lot of the top places around the country and I'm cool. Um, and whether you're English or Spanish or in Hawaii, you know, whatever you want phone cells or face to face, you know, doesn't matter. Um, Cody at CodyAskins.com. It took a long time to write that out. Cody at CodyAskins.com. And I will be happy to um, answer questions in relation to pointing you in the right direction if I can. You know, like my, the reason we do all these videos is my goal is to help insurance agents succeed. And it, it's not, an, it, it's, it's 92% actually do fail. Like we started a conference called 8% Nation because only 8% succeed. I've spent about, um, I would say about $1.2 million on that event so far. I would say collectively between the amount of agents that are gonna attend Vegas and the previous event in Dallas and the previous event in uh, Nashville over the first three years, probably had about um, two to 3,000 agents actually attend this event. Okay, and those are conservative numbers. But what we do with that is we're bringing people in, and this is this ties back into this topic because you need to get around people that can level you up. And events, I mean, the best way, like once you actually get your insurance license, you're like, dude, I want to start like, you know, I want to start making some money. I want to be successful. I don't want to struggle, you know, and I want some immediate tips. Well, you, you need to find a good place. You need to plug in to good content. You need to attend events so that you can learn personal development, self-improvement. You have to spend some money in yourself. Like no successful person ever got great without investing in themselves. Okay. And then you've got to realize that this is an activity game. You know, the more people you talk to, the more people you get a chance to close and sell. And in this business, the way I, the reason I had so much success early on is I focused on, on, on literally seeing the people, my secret to success at an early age, 117 grand, was simply this. I committed, I committed to sit seeing 10 people per week. So every single week, this was my system. I'm gonna set 15 appointments, I'm gonna sit with 10, and I'm gonna sell five. And the weeks that I did that, I made a couple grand and had a lot of success. If you wanna have a successful insurance career, Personally, I would recommend a life and health license. And I would also recommend that you have some type of weekly system that you can, you can duplicate over and over again so that you too can be successful. You can be a part of the 8%, not part of the, not part of the 92%. You can have flexibility, be your own boss, tons of income potential, residual income stream, unlimited income. And if you ever need help, obviously you can email me, Cody at CodyAskins.com. Which insurance license should you start your career with? Personally, I would recommend a life and health. You ask other people, they may give you a different opinion. However, this is my YouTube channel, and this is my opinion. We get a question a lot. Cody, if you had to start over as a brand new insurance agent today, what would you do? And I think my answer is going to surprise you because I'm not going to talk about captive or independent. I'm not going to talk about carriers. I'm not going to talk about commissions. I'm not going to even talk about product types because every new insurance agent is in a different place right now, right? You watch this right now and you're thinking, Cody, what would you do? I get this question a lot. If you had to start over, what would you do? 
If it was day one for you, where you're a brand new agent, you were 30 days in, you were a month later, you were, you know what I mean? What would you do? And I think I would really, if I had to break it down into three steps, okay, of exactly what I would do as a brand new insurance agent as we release this live on Monday, happy Labor Day, okay, thanks for being with us. What I wanna talk about really quick is the three quick steps, which is step number one, I'm not saying you gotta buy them, but dang, you need leads. Leads are incredibly important because leads generate, if you're not lazy, they're supposed to generate activity. And I truly believe that activity is imperative to your success. As a brand new agent, if I had to go back, I don't know if there was much, I don't know if there was a lot I would change, but these are a couple things I would maybe change because of what I realize now, especially the last one that I'm gonna talk about, okay? That's the first thing, leads, activity, super important, okay? That's the first step. Step two, if I had to go back and be a brand new insurance agent right now today, step two would be, you ready? Step two, I, I, I want you to realize that sits are king. Most people are focused on setting appointments and setting appointments is great, but sits are king. If you're a face-to-face -face agent, how, 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 how am I doing on glare? If you're a face-to-face -face agent, you have to sit with prospects. The only reason I was successful, I made $117,361.13 my first eight months, and how I did it was I sat with 10 per week. I wasn't special. I wasn't extremely intelligent. I wasn't the best at building relationships. My product knowledge was probably subpar. My sales experience was extremely subpar, but what I focused on was sits or king. And when I talk about sits or king, I was super consistent, which is also extremely, extremely important. Most agents are not consistent enough. When you have leads and activity and you sit with prospects every week, 10 minimum, 12, 15, 16, 20, whatever the case is, we're thinking too small. The average insurance agent, if we had to do a poll across the entire country of that hundreds of thousands, maybe millions of insurance agents. What we would find out, what we would learn is that the average insurance agent sits, actually sits with one to two people a week. Only sits with one to two people a week, which is a freaking embarrassment for our industry. It's sad, it's ridiculous, and frankly, it's a joke. Okay, so that's step number two. Sits are king. Step number three, Step number three, I would want to find ways to, as I spell it wrong, think bigger, okay? I'm not even gonna erase it, right? We're live, so it's up there. Hopefully you can read it, at least, I, at least you know what I said, right? Think bigger. You need to be thinking bigger. Most people think too small, and it's really easy to think too small. When I say think bigger, there's some keys to that, right? I always write down my goals every day. It's imperative. If you don't have a goal, there's people in our industry that say goals are stupid, I'm telling you, they will never reach their true potential, not even close, okay? First step goals, under think bigger. The next thing is you need some type of mentor in your life that you can learn from every single week. Someone to hold you accountable. Someone to help you get to the next level. Someone to challenge you. Someone to stretch you. Someone to push you to do more tomorrow than you're doing today, okay? Or today than you did yesterday, okay? But also, you need to focus on learning. The couple things, there was, there was, there's a few things I did really well I thought bigger than most new agents as a brand new insurance agent, and I didn't realize it was that important at the time. I didn't, it wasn't like I knew. I did a lot of really good things back then without really knowing why. And I look back now and I'm like, 
that paid off, okay? One was goals, other was mentors, right? Learned a ton from my father. I had a goal, 100K my first year, boom. Wrote it down, signed it, put it up in my cubicle every day. I looked at it, I thought about it, that's all I thought about. But then also I was learning. The Art of Closing the Sale by Brian Tracy. I was going, I was paying to go to conferences and events and training and sales training and learning. I was doing everything I could, Wildman, etc. Everything I could to learn and consume knowledge and to really think about how do I get to another level. So when we talk about insurance agent training, when we talk about throwback, when we talk about being live on a holiday, I want to think what would I do if I had to start over as a new agent right now? And all I can say is these are the three steps that kind of got me through that I didn't really realize it then like I realize it now. Okay, I'm not saying I would change a thing that I did, because I wouldn't. But activity breeds sits, sits breeds cells, and when you think bigger, you'll challenge yourself to not just be the typical insurance agent that thinks 50K is okay, right? Average insurance agent makes about $47,000, $48,000 a year. That's something I've read over the last few years. I don't know if it's statistically perfect, right? 72% of statistics are made up, right, Dylan? Most people are not challenging themselves enough. So when we sit here, live on a Monday, talk about insurance agent training and how you can do it and what I would do. And if I had to talk to my brand new self at 19 back then, these are the things I want to think about. But I want to challenge you to be super consistent as you grow. Okay? So I'm going to let you get back to your holiday. I want to challenge you to think about this stuff. What I would do if I was a brand new insurance agent today. Thanks for watching Insurance Agent Training. Have a great week. So we'll talk to you for phone feed on tomorrow. Thank you guys so much. Appreciate you. Hey, there's a big question that I hear a lot on our YouTube channel in comments, and that's how to spend money. How should I invest? What should I do? What should I have as an insurance agent to really get to the next level? Even to get started as a new insurance agent. So I'm going to go through some things that you should consider investing in as an insurance agent. And I think a couple of these things I'm going to share with you will actually surprise you, right? So stay with me. We're going to talk about how to invest. And so I'm going to go through some basic things. The first thing is you need to think about it would be a CRM. Okay, something to track your clients. It don't have to it don't have to be expensive. I think we have a if you go to like training.codyaskins.com, we have an agent resource library and I think we've got a link for Radius Bob a CRM for like $19 a month, okay? Should you go to training.codyaskins.com to check that out. And so that's one thing that I know that I didn't always have originally as an agent, but I wish I would have. It's helpful, keeps everybody organized. You can export, you can mail, you can, you can have it track birthdays. There's a lot of little things that you can do. So a CRM is a smart investment as an insurance agent if you don't already have one or if your company doesn't have one. The second thing is business cards. You know, Even though people may say, well, business cards are outdated and I personally don't use business cards nowadays, that doesn't mean that my client doesn't want me to leave one when I go sell them and take their money. Right? So think about business cards as like a, uh, you can have digital business cards, you can have real business cards, but if you're still seeing seniors and you're out, out with families every day, you need something to leave with them that shows who you are, they can look you up, they can remember you, and it's still very, very important. Right? The third thing that I like even better than business cards is business card magnets. I used to use this at homes constantly. I would leave it on, I would literally go place it on their fridge for them. If you leave it up to them, they probably won't go put it on the fridge. People are lazy. I would take it and I would put it on their fridge. And I guarantee you, I've got clients from 10 years ago, eight years ago, six years ago, that still have my magnet on their fridge because I still get calls today, which is powerful. It's crazy. How easy is it for someone to lose a business card or a pin? They get thrown away, they get in the drawer, they get put here or there, then they end up in the junk, everybody's got a junk drawer, right? Business card magnets are visible, they're right in front of you, they're on their fridge, and they're powerful, right? The fourth thing you need to really strongly consider is you need to consider investing in, in some marketing, all right? Whether that's, whether that's you doing it yourself, whether that's you buying leads from Secure Agent Leads, whether that's you buying marketing services from Secure Agent Marketing and Secure Agent Marketing is managing those marketing services for you, whatever. You need to be considering investing 
into marketing because the big thing, the big reason insurance agents fail is they don't consistently get in front of people every single week. And they don't invest money and they don't know what to do and then they end up not investing money and then they don't end up getting in front of people consistently week in and week out. Marketing and leads can do that for you. I encourage you that no matter what you're selling, you have to be sitting with 10 people every single week. Those are prospects. I don't care if it's warm market, marketing, leads, whatever you gotta do, door knocking, cold calling, whatever. Businesses, chambers, networking, you have to be getting in front of 10 people every single week. We got a course called Prospecting 101 in our course library at CodyAskins.com. It's Prospecting 101. It's like a couple hundred bucks and it teaches people how to invest, how to get in front of people consistently, how to prospect as an insurance agent because prospecting is one of the main things that insurance agents struggle with. Marketing is key because it can help you be consistent week in and week out. All right, the next thing is a website. Most, most people don't have a website. They don't have a digital presence. They're not investing in SEO for long-term growth. I would say that the, the clients that are making the most amount of money with us, I'm talking 50 grand a month, 100 grand a month, 200 grand a month, or companies that are making 10, you know, a million bucks a month, that we're managing stuff for them, they're investing in long-term growth, right? Through websites, blogging, YouTube videos, they're investing in the future. They're investing in tomorrow's dollar instead of today's dollar. They're thinking more long-term than short-term, and that's why a website and SEO is extremely important. Security, here at Security Agent Marketing, one of the companies I own, we do websites and SEO for insurance agents. It's extremely affordable. It's something that you need to have. Something that you can add to your business card, your business card magnet. Something you can add to your Facebook page. Something add to, you can add to any of your marketing that you're doing. You need to have somewhere that someone can go online. If they search, and I, I challenge you to try this right now. If you go search, say you're selling Medicare. Search Medicare insurance agent on Google in your area. Whatever product you're selling, final expense insurance agent, life insurance agent, property and casualty insurance agent. So whatever. Search what you sell, your core product that you sell, car insurance agent, whatever, in your local market and see who pops up. And then study what they're doing because even though they may be number one on Google, they may, they may show up as the number one Google My Business area and everything else, or they may show up on Google Maps, you can be where they are. And it doesn't take as long as you think. So if you started thinking about long term and having a digital presence and having a website, right? It's your digital handshake. You need to be thinking about those things as well, right? So we've talked about CRM, business card, business card magnets, marketing leads, website SEO. Another thing that most people don't think about when it comes to investing is they don't think about investing their time. They don't think they don't think about reading books, audio books, learning. I am constantly trying to invest in YouTube videos, etc. I try to invest my time in learning. What there's, the reason people don't succeed is there's things that other people know that you need to know to win and succeed, but your, your ego is getting in the way of you spending money or, re, or reading a book to know what other people know, right? I spend not only time, not only energy, but I also spend money. I would say that I spend, if you think about all the events that I go to, and, and, and when I say this number, you, most of you are going to think I'm full of it, but I promise you, my video guys are here, they can attest to this. When I think about all the events that I go to, when I think about the cruises, when I think about the big conferences, when I think about the books, when I think about the audio books, when I think about the coaches, when I think about the, you know, the YouTube coach and, and the business coach and all these other people and the universities, everything else, I guarantee you, I spend about $100,000 per year just on in investing in myself. And I feel like I'm slowly trying to get to where I want to go because I'm not afraid to take some freaking risk. Most people are afraid of this. But I'm telling you, anybody that's been uber successful in the world had to take some risk along the way. We've got 8% Nation now. We've, 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 we've lost over a half a million bucks investing into this because it's going to change the future of our industry. And I'm thinking, long term instead of short term all right so you can invest time you can invest your energy right most people need to be working out they need to be, they need to be working on themselves 
and you can invest your money in, 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 in you and that's an investment that you should be making consistently. All right? They say the top CEO reads a book every single week. I'm starting a book of the month and I'm trying to get to where I eventually start reading a book a week. It sounds like a lot. But if the top wealthiest people in the world are doing it, then why wouldn't I do it? Those are success habits that you need to be thinking about. All right. So one thing I want to leave you with is my power five. My power five of five things that I do every single day that are investments back into my business and myself. All right. I call it my power five. And there are five things that I really focus on doing to start my day. I want to wake up between five and 5.59 a.m. That's called the 5 a.m. club, all right? That's n number one. Number two, I want to get a good workout in because when my energy is right, when I'm upbeat, when I'm enthusiastic, when I'm excited, when I'm moving fast paced, I have better days than when I don't. It's important, whether you think it's important or not, all right, it's super important. Your health and your energy is everything in my opinion, all right? The third thing is I write down my goals. Having goals and having something to shoot for. When I made 117K in my first eight months, I wrote down that I wanted to make 100K my first year and I wrote it down every flipping day. And then it became a reality. Weird that when you write something down and you get serious about something that it, it ends up becoming a reality. All right? If you want something to become a reality, you need to be thinking about it every day. You need to be writing it down every single day. All right? The next thing is I try to learn something every single day from a book or an audio book or a YouTube video podcast. I was listening to Brad Lee's podcast, Dropping Bombs, which I was on last year, and I was listening to him interview Jordan Belfort. And I loved it. I eat that stuff up, man. I, I want to pick up nuggets. What are they doing? When I, when, and, and, and when I learn, I think about it different than most people. Most people, when they're learning and they're investing time and money and energy, and they're watching stuff, and when I watch a podcast, I'm thinking, what does this dude know that I don't know? And how can I give him money to know what he knows? Most people will have their egos in the way, their prides in the way. They will not spend money. I will spend money to know what that person knows, right? I watched Evan Carmichael and then went and gave him several thousand dollars because I want to know what that dude knows, right? The next thing is, and most of you will never do it, is a cold shower. It's, it's invaluable how it wakes me up. I did it this morning again. It wakes me up and it forces me to do something to start my day that I do not like doing. Everybody says, oh, you, gotta do, you only do stuff you love to do. Hogwash. You need to do stuff that you don't like to do. And that's how I want to start my day every single day. So those are my power five that I encourage you. I teach this and we, and we practice this and we're posting in my Success Society group talking about this every single day. So if you're not a part of Success Society, add me on Instagram at Cody.Askins. Reach out. We'll get you added to my Success Society Facebook group, secret Facebook group. It's of agents. I've got a weekly accountability call. I'm helping agents every week. It's about investing. It's about investing in your business. It's about investing time, energy, and money so that you can take you, your business, and yourself, and your income, and your life to another level. All right, let's play a little game. Prospect says, hey, I want to think about it. And you say, ah. you show? not anymore. The video is right there. I'm going to show you what to say and how to say it. Click on it. I'll see you there. Who loves when people say, I want to think about it? I want you to call me back. I'm not ready to make a decision.